Here we are, connection from Italy. We came here to celebrate my 30th birthday. Of course, we're gonna do a vlog, show you a little bit around of Rome, and we'll show you some of the ancient part of the city and some of the more modern part. We came overnight because it's gonna be more spectacular for you. Yeah, this is the 2000 year old metropolis. We are currently at the Ark of Constantine, which is a triumphal arc with all the incision and sculptures of the battle that Emperor Constantine won. The weather is extremely hot, also humid. That's why it's super sweaty. This is the Ark of Constantine with all the battles and the stories. Emperor of Constantine, we can see that in Rome, all the historical sites are extremely protected by the Carabinieri, by the army and so on. And over there you can see the Colosseum. I'll tell you an interesting story about the Colosseum. If you think that the parts that are missing have been collapsing because of the time, it's not because of that. Just um, after the emperor collapsed, um, they needed materials, so the people of Rome started tearing down some of the stones and some of the blocks to build their own houses because the Colosseum was covered in marble. It was an extremely spectacular building, capable of 48,000 people approximately sitting during the battles and 68,000. If they were standing, they could be up to 70,000. There was a system of uh, solar protection with wooden structure and um, they still don't know exactly how the how it worked and uh, before the Colosseum was built here there was a lake which the Romans dried out with a particular technique of building with their aqueduct so nobody knows how deep down are the foundation of the of the Colosseum yet we can see that the missing parts have been built in bricks and mortar because the Italian way of restaurating uh, old buildings is by showing clearly what are the new parts and what are the old parts. So this is how you're gonna distinguish what has been added later on and what has been always there. In those big holes you can see in the top is where they were used to insert the wooden structure for the, for the roof that was protecting from the sun during the warm summers in the Roman battles and uh, I'm gonna show you on the other side better here we can see the Ark of Constantine again of the other side and from here on in the distance you can see it's where it starts the Foro Romano which is a series of squares and plazas where business was happening in the ancient capital of the world here we are on the other side of the Colosseum you can see how it is illuminated during the night and if you have never seen it, it's very spectacular and very impressive to see this ancient structure live. It's really magnificent and really impressive that this was built 2,000 years ago or open 2,000 years ago. It's called Amphitheatro Flavio because it was built by the family of the Flavias. We are currently living the Colosseum, walking on Via dei Fori Imperiali, this large street, this large boulevard was made by Mussolini during the fascist year of Italy because he wanted to revive the Roman Empire and that's why he was used to build these large boulevards where the army could march. So this was a very bad project because he had to cover part of the ruins that are beneath this street because now when you walk on the street on the two sides you can see the ancient Forum Romanum. And from here we're moving toward Piazza Venezia, which I'll show you later. What you can see in the distance over there is the Trajan Column. This is a celebrative column from the Emperor Trajan, who made it built for his conquer of the Dacia, which is the modern Romania. This was the celebration of that conquer. Here we arrived at the Forum of Trajan. Here in these columns is where the Romans were used to make deals, to trade. And here we are closer to the Column of Trajano. And in the background uh, we see the Basilica of the Holiest Name of Mary, which was built later in the Renaissance. And here on you can see the rest of the Forum. 
Here we are at the Vittoriano, which is the monument of the reunification of Italy, which was built approximately a little bit later than the Tour Eiffel, so around the 1900s, in this, um, for the era, very bad style, because it's a fake historical style. Um, they was used to make these fake ancient columns in statues in marble. Uh, in order to recreate greatness of the Roman Empire and they were inspired by the past, by the Baroque. Also heavy, protected by the army. And over there we can see Palazzo Venezia, which is a very famous, because the whole piazza is called Piazza Venezia, that was used to be the, the embassy of Venice in Rome and the new king asked to remove the palace and build it 50 meters so that the new Vittoriano can be directly at the end of Via del Corso, which you will be seeing later, which is this street that starts from Piazza del Popolo. And that palace there was just moved brick by brick, 50 meters on the side. A little tip, the Italian restrooms are awful, so try to avoid them. Every time we come to Italy, it's so hard to find a decent restroom. So mind this when you come to Rome or to Italy in general. We are currently moving towards um, Fontana di Trevi. We are walking, it takes approximately 15 to 20 minutes from Piazza Venezia to Fontana di Trevi. The closer we are getting to Fontana di Trevi, there are more and more people, super crowded, a lot of tourists, and it's super loud. And here, while work, walking in the narrow streets of Rome, suddenly you arrive at Fontana di Trevi. Fontana di Trevi, it's one of the most spectacular fountains in the world. It was designed and built by Bernini and it's a representation of the god of the seas, uh, Neptune. The legends say you should drop a coin in the fountain so that you can, uh, you can come back to Rome. And approximately 5 million euros every year, every year are thrown in the Fontana di Trevi. Here you can see the thousands of tourists in this square. And the water that you see here arrives from Tivoli, which is a city near uh, Rome, uh, approximately 70 kilometers away from here. And it still uses a Roman aqueduct in order to bring the water to here. It's also the back of the facade of a building. I'm gonna try to show you better from, from higher. We were just now at the Fontana di Trevi and we are walking now towards the Pantheon. We're gonna show you also the Pantheon and then Piazza Navona. Here in this square along the way from the Fontana di Trevi to the Pantheon and this is the Tempio of Adriano which is also an ancient Roman structure here and we're proceeding forward. From here you can see how it looks completely in the big picture. And here we go, we arrived at the Pantheon, one of the most ancient temples of Rome. The side walls, which are up to four or five meters thick, they think that the concrete in the middle, in the core of the wall, is still wet because it cannot dry after 2,000 years or more. Also, some of the metal that was on the building was taken away and was used in order to build the Baldachin and the St. Peter Basilica, which uh, this time we won't be visiting because it's not part of the plan, but next time maybe. And if you are watching a Creative Insider video for the first time, make sure to check our Copenhagen tour. Earlier it was possible to just enter the Pantheon anytime, but currently it's limited after the coronavirus pandemic, so I cannot show you the the dome and the famous hall, which is nine meters meter in diameter. This is the square you can see also very populated during the night. And now we are moving on to Navona. At the end of the day, we had a change in the plan. Uh, we're not doing Navona anymore because we're super tired. We walked like I don't know over. 
10 kilometers and the group is quite big so they didn't want to carry on walking we had a little bit of an ice cream and we did a reel of the gelateria la palma which is like a an ice cream shop where you have 150 different uh, flavors of gelato and um, in order to see that you can check that on my Instagram which is atleshtark you'll find the link in the description and tell me below in the comments if you have liked the vlog from Rome by night I've tried to show you a little bit of where I've been living before Frankfurt share some of my knowledge about the beauties of Rome and stay tuned for more we'll be moving we'll be going also to new york this year so you'll see some stuff from new york keep following subscribe to the channel if you haven't and i'll see you at the next one bye